morning, Rising Hills Church. Be that. What wonder of wonders, what love is this that Christ would die for me? His goodness, his merit, his righteousness, this sinner's only plea. Oh, foolish mind, be crucified, the word is finished. All my boast is in Jesus, all my hope is his love, and I will glory forever in what the cross has done. Now fully forgiven. Now fully forgiven. My life is there with grace is undeserved. For mercy I flow down that sacred hill. That grace is now return. Rise up. Rise up, my soul. Our boast is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we have someone we can boast in? Yeah. Not associated with this world. Hallelujah. You can be seated if you would. Uh, make a, a welcome, give you a welcome, and uh, then we're going to start with an altar of prayer. Of course, I'm not George Anderson. Someone already asked me, it was visiting today, said, you Dr. Anderson? And I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> That way, if the, if, if the message is a flop, they'll think, well, I don't want to hear him anymore. <laughs> but no, uh, I'm not. But they're homesick. Uh, he called Friday, and, and um, George and Deborah are still 
testing positive for the flu. So they need our prayers, right? And after I preach this morning, you'll be praying for them a whole lot more that they can be here next week. Uh, so there's a lot. Even uh, Andrew that usually sings and plays in the band, their daughter Lucy, she's got the flu as well. So there's a lot of sickness going on. Uh, but God's a healer. He's a healer. And whatever your need is this morning, God can take care of that. Do you believe that? Yes. He can. And I know Miss Denise has had some issues this week, and uh, so she needs our prayers as well. And there's other things going on. There's things in the world. Listen, we need to pray for Israel. We need to pray for our country more than we ever have today. Uh, so... Right now, if you would, let's just stand. Those of you that will, come, let's meet in the altar, and let's have a word of prayer. Let's start this service on our knees. How about that? When you do that, just come and join us. <clears throat> our Father, we thank you for this privilege that we have to be in your house today. Thank you for these that are here. And uh, God, we just believe this morning you have something special for us. We are your children, and we've come this way to worship you today. But God, we need your touch. We need a healing upon our land. We need a healing across the seas this morning. The Middle East needs some peace. There's always been turmoil there. But God, we pray that you'll give some peace and encouragement to them. We know, God, that this didn't take anybody by surprise. We knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. And I just pray that as you look down on us today, God, that you'll meet our needs because that's the God that you are. Pray that you'll supply what we need in this service today. These people that are gathered in this altar. Uh, I pray for healing for those that are sick, especially George and Deborah this morning. I just pray that the Holy Spirit will move into their home, wherever they are right now, if they're able to watch. I pray that, <laughs> that you'll just bless them. We love our pastor and his family. We hate it when they're sick. So we just pray for their healing. But we pray for this service today that you'll do a healing in this place as well. Maybe it's not a sickness. Maybe it's a spiritual something that people need today. Especially if somebody's never made you Lord of their life. They've never asked you to forgive their sins and save their soul. I pray that they'll do that today. Thank you for your presence. Lord, I feel you. I sense the Holy Spirit in this place right now. So I pray that you'll be honored and you'll be glorified in everything that's done. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you love us so much that you would send your son to die for us to be our, uh, our, our hedge between us and you. God bless this place today. We love you and praise you for all that you do. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, if you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. And I pray, oh, I pray, well, I do. Uh, uh, I ask you to take that little card, that welcome card that's in front of that seat in front of you and fill that thing out, put it in the plate. I'll tell you what will happen. You're not going to be on some uh, website somewhere and get a bunch of emails and all that. But I tell you what you'll do, at some point you'll get a quick, brief phone call from our pastor to tell you thank you for coming. And if, see if there's anything that he can do for you. We're glad that you're here. So here's what we're going to do. Now that you're seated and you're good and comfortable, we're going to ask you to stand again. And we're going to continue with the worship. Come on, guys. And actually, if you guys would stand, let's, let's just say, hey, good morning, everybody. Give somebody a handshake, maybe a hug, or a holy kiss. <laughs> Watch out, Rick. <laughs>
right, well, we're going to continue to worship. If everybody start making their way back to their seats here in about one more minute, we're going to continue.
just declare and we thank you, Lord, that we can sing these truths. God, these wonderful gospel truths that Christ is ours forevermore. And God, I love this song because it, it, it says the things that we go through, God, we, we have things in this life that we will struggle with, but there's always an answer, and that answer is you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can lean on you. We trust in you. Thank you that you are with us in all aspects of life. Your highs, lows, middles, whatever it may be, Lord, you are always there. And we as your children, God, we, we look to you, we turn to you, we trust in you because we know that you ultimately have your plan that has been, that has been planned since the beginning, since the foundations of the earth. Lord, you are good and you are always good. And we, we ask that you would help us, Lord, to trust you. Because, God, our hearts do go astray. God, we, we do tend to not want to trust you. But, Lord, would you remind us through your word, through your Holy Spirit, to trust in you in all aspects of life. Because you're worthy, God. You know it all. You, you know everything. So, Lord, as, as Rick comes up here to preach, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak directly through him, that your word would grip our hearts this morning and that your word would not fall on deaf ears, but, Lord, that we would receive it with gladness and that you would overflow our cups this morning so that we may honor and praise you, not just internally, but externally. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we have it so we can learn from it. Lord, refresh us this morning. I pray for refreshing over every single person here and for the lost here this morning that don't know you, that have never trusted in you, that have never seen the light of Christ. Oh, Lord, would you draw them unto yourself and save them this morning. Let them come from death to life for the first time. And would you change their lives forever? We love you, Jesus. And thank you for the blood that covers all of our sins. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. If you would, just remain standing for the reading of God's word. Uh, thank you, Austin. Thank you, Band and Amber. And uh, it's easier to preach when you've got some worship music like that behind you. And, and uh, you know, we, we've stood, and I know George has too. When you had to take the next 15 minutes to overcome what had just happened behind you, you know, and kind of get the service moving, we don't have to do that here, so we're thankful for that. Book of Genesis, chapter number three. If you don't know where that is, it'd be the first book in the Bible. <laughs> Genesis, chapter three, begin reading at verse number one. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said, "Ye shall not eat of every, or ye shall eat of, ye shall not eat of every tree." I'm sorry. Let me, let me start over. I got to, I got to tell you, I'm so kind of doped up this morning from allergy medis, medication. I was at Kroger at 6:30 this morning <laughs> because I ran out. So if it's like 2:45. Just wave at me and I'll start winding it down. How about that? <laughs> Verse number one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said, shall you not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said... You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for, uh, was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband. And he did eat. If you think about that, you recognize in 1 John 2.16 that same uh, type of scripture about the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are destroyers to us. Verse 7, after they sinned, and the eyes 
of them both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. You can be seated. Uh, here's the title of the message this morning, Satan's Tempting Devices. Satan's Tempting Devices. There are some things that the devil uses against us to fight the war against us. And he has one goal in purpose, and that is to draw us away from God, right? He don't want us, he don't like it when Amber's singing and she's so overcome by the words and, and the uh, emotions of the spirit in that song that she raises her hand. Satan don't like that. He doesn't like it when at home you gather your family together and you have prayer as a family unit. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like seeing these first rows of young people sitting up here. And what he's going to do is use certain things that he can, that he knows he can, to draw us away from God and cause havoc in our lives. And in his attempt to lure us away, he uses those things and certain things. Listen, a bass fisherman understands, especially this time of the year, how you can uh, fish with uh, a, a spring lizard or a plastic lizard or plastic worm, and you can throw that thing out there and just let it sit on the bottom for half a day and just sit there and watch it and nothing happens because the bass is doing the same thing. He's just looking at it, just staring at it. But here's what happens. You can lift that rod tip and begin to twitch it just a little bit. And that, that worm will come up and start to dance a little bit, and boom, that bass has got it. Why? Because it was so enticing to him or her that he just couldn't resist it. Friend, listen carefully. That's exactly what Satan wants to do in your life and in my life, in the life of this church. Because people are being saved. They're coming to know Jesus. We're baptizing and the devil doesn't like it. You with me? Don't go to sleep on me. I'll just preach louder. <laughs> I got ways of keeping you awake. Satan has a master's degree in luring us away from God. He knows what he's doing. And uh, this morning, I just want to give you three quick, <laughs> oh, you've heard that before, but three quick points about the devices that the devil uses. First, he tempts us to desire what God has forbidden. What God has forbidden. That's what we found in our text this morning with, uh, in the Garden of Eden with, with Adam and with Eve. In chapter 2, verse 16, God said, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat freely. Verse 17 said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou, listen, thou shalt not eat of it. Isn't that what he said? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And what does Satan do? Use the very thing that God had just forbid them to do to draw them, to lure them, to entice them away from God's presence in their lives. And can I tell you that we're still paying the price for that, right? And we will until Jesus comes again. Because of one thing. They, listen, you know what Satan was saying? <laughs> he doesn't really mean that. I know him better than you do. I've known God longer than you have, Eve. He, don't, he doesn't mean that. He means something else. No, listen, God says what he means, 
And he means everything that he says. And, and you know, listen, for an alcoholic, they know better than to even turn around if they're lost in the parking lot of a package store. It's too tempting for them. If you're trying to quit smoking, stay away from the cigarette aisle at Kroger. Listen, you know what I do? I don't even walk. Now, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink. Uh, but I'll tell you this. Because of my calling from God, you'll never see me in the wine or beer aisle at Kroger or the grocery store somewhere because that's the one time that somebody from church is going to come in when you're just trying to make a shortcut to the milk department <laughs> and they're going to see you there and say, Lord, have mercy. Look at Rick down there. He must be getting six pack of beer. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, that's not going to happen. But, but, but the devil doesn't use that against me because he knows he's wasting his time but there are other areas like the guy that flew up behind me this morning on my way back from the grocery store getting some medicine two cars on the road mine and his i don't know he must have fell out of the sky i don't know where he came from but all of a sudden all i see is headlights you know where he ended up the street, uh, the house across the street from me. <laughs> and he turned around in their driveway and left. I think he just threw a paper out. Newspaper. It didn't bother me very much. <laughs> yeah, I had to say, God help me. Because I, 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 Lord, I got to preach this morning. I don't need that. You think the devil did that? I do. I think he does things like that. Listen, we need to keep our guard up. We need to watch out. We need to build a tower and keep ourselves up where we can see the devil smart about what he does. He knows how to get a hold of you. He knows what makes you tick, doesn't he? He does. Samson, the Bible said, was a Nazarite, meaning he was to set his life apart from everyone else and not look like the world. You know something, folks? We ought, as children of God, we ought not look like the world. We pray for them, right? Well, we shouldn't be looking like them. You ever, you ever just been maybe in, I don't know, a lot of sickness going on in the doctor's office. Somebody come in and they're just sitting there and all of a sudden you just think, I bet that guy's a Christian. It just feels like it. That's what I want people to think about me when they come around me. I don't want them to say, yeah, I thought he was a Christian. <laughs> we need to live our lives in a way that reflects the Lord Jesus Christ because we are his reflection. We're ambassadors for God. Do you understand that? We're here representing him, not ourselves. Samson the Nazarite was forbidden to ever let a razor come upon his head, but his lust lured him away from God. And in the end, he lost his power. Amen? Amen? King Saul. God gave him a command. He said, I want you to go to uh, Amalek, that city. I want you to destroy it, kill everything there, and spare them not. But what did Saul do? He spared King Agag along with all of his best substance and took it for himself. And then when he got caught, he blamed it on everybody else and said, well, they told me to do that. <laughs> what did God do? Let him, well, I understand. It's okay. No, sir. He removed him from king, his kingship in Israel. God means what he's talking about, folks. We need to listen to him. Amen? Amen. 
We need to listen to him. We're, listen, we're going to be the better for it. We're going to be the winners. Throughout Scripture, we read about men that fell prey to the devil by doing what God had forbidden them to do. Listen, ask David about Satan's temptation. When he stood on his roof and looking next door too long, it cost him his son, didn't it? The little boy was born, but God took him. I don't want things like that to happen in my life, do you? You say, well, God's not going to. Listen, God put promises in this book, but he didn't tell us even though we have a free will you just go out and do anything you want to do and it'll be okay. It won't be. We're going to stand in judgment one day. And the bookstore in heaven probably already running out of paper under my name to write more things down. <laughs> I'd like to stand before God one day and him say, you did good. But the only, the only thing that he's going to say that to is when I accepted Jesus Christ, his son, as my Savior. He'll say, I remember that. You did good, son. You did good. Come on in. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait for that. How about you? I'm looking forward to it. I can't hardly wait for heaven. Asked Lot about his, wife, uh, his life down in Sodom. He lost his wife because of it. And you say, well, that wasn't his fault. That was her fault. No, listen, he was the head of the house. Had he not had his family down there, that wouldn't have happened. Can't blame it on her. I mean, she was doing what she did. I say it's his fault. Adam blamed Eve, <laughs> didn't he? But Adam knew better. In fact, God's the one that talked to Adam first. Told him, leave that thing alone. He said, don't even touch it. I'm glad I'm kind of hoarse this morning. It gets my pitch up a little bit higher. You say, well, what in the world's that guy mad at? I'm not mad about anything. It's just the way I preach. Ask the prodigal son if life in the hog pen was better than it was at his father's house. Listen, the devil will tell you in his luring of you that if you'll just do this, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You're still saved. Has he ever told you that? You're still saved. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Listen, I'll tell you something. We ought to love Jesus more than that. We should. Cheryl's dad used to have a saying before he passed. He was a preacher. And of course, he, he had a lot of sayings, <laughs> some good ones. But he used to say, you know, I've heard people say, boy, the devil just jumped straddle on my back and rode me all week. <laughs> and my father-in-law would say, I, wanted, I, I, I want to say to him, if I wasn't any closer to God that, than that, that I couldn't just shake him loose, I wouldn't tell anybody about it. <laughs> we ought to be closer to God than what we are. Listen, if you're close enough, you'll, you'll sense that enticing from the devil when it comes, and you'll know to avoid it. There's people with pornography issues. Even sitting in churches. You ought to pray before you have to turn that computer on. And just being honest with you, that's where we live. That's where we live. Just like the bass, it's a trick. It's a trick. So I wonder why we want to settle for an imitation when we already have the real thing. We have Jesus, and he'll help us, right? 
He'll give us the guidance we need. He certainly will. Let me tell you, uh, I uh, <laughs> used to do some acting and some TV shows and things. And uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Greg said, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and I enjoy, I listen, I enjoyed it. I, I was very selective in what I did. But uh, I enjoyed it. It's fun. And I liked it. Uh, I mean, I act like a bass player up here every Sunday. So, <laughs> you know, I'm good at it. <laughs> uh, and I had people say, you need to pursue that a little bit more. You know what? That that would be fun because you can make some good money, you know, at that. But you know what? God said, "What did I call you to do? Did I call you to act on the big screen, or did I call you to represent me and preach my word?" So you're not going to see me on the big screen anymore. <laughs> Because I want to live my life in a way that God wants me to as best I can with his help. Amen? Amen. We should be that way in our lives. But Satan will tempt us by a desire for what God has forbidden us to do. Secondly, he tempts us to desire what God's not revealed. What he has not revealed to us. Uh, verse 5 of chapter 3, that phrase, knowing good and evil, it was not meant for them to know good and evil. There was no reason for them to know. They lived in a perfect place in, in the garden. They were perfect. No sin. Thank you, Adam. And eat not Adam, our guitar player, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And Satan points out to Eve, there's some things that God hadn't told you. It's kind of like politics. <laughs> some things they hadn't told us that we find out later and say, man, they were politicians. But what God wants us to know, he will reveal to us. Amen? How many times have you read through a passage in, in God's Word hundreds of times. Same passage, same verse, and you just read right over it. It just doesn't do anything necessarily for you. But then one day, you read it, and all of a sudden, it causes you to pause. And you say, that's it. I never knew that. Why? Because God, through His Spirit, hadn't yet revealed it to you why because you didn't need to know it just yet you ever think about heaven this is yes this is no and this I'm not sure I, I'm over caffeinated or you know okay you ever think about heaven I do too Everything about friends and family, what they're doing there right now? I do too. But what if God gave us two minutes of full revelation of what's happening or what heaven's going to be like? You know what happened? Mass suicide. It would because that's where we'd want to go. But we're here for a reason today. We're here for a purpose because God's still speaking to people. Thank God. He's still drawing. He's still convicting. He's still doing what he did in Genesis. He's still providing and helping and encouraging. So we've still got work to do. Amen? Until Jesus comes. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29 said, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever. 
Some things God hadn't told us just yet. And he may not until we get home. But those things that we do know, we need to live by them. We need to abide by them. Don't worry about those things. Listen, I'm going to tell you. Satan has lured some good men out of the pulpit that God called to preach by telling them that they don't know enough about God's word. They don't understand enough. And they ought to get out of the business. And they listen to him. But hear me, I can't preach to you what God hasn't revealed to me. But those things that he has, <laughs> I can. Right? And, 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 and there, there's times I've preached the same sermon three or four times in different places. And sometimes, every time, find something new. God, through his spirit, just moves in my heart. I say, boy, I wish I'd have known that when I was at that other church. Because <laughs> they really needed that. But. God's revealed enough to us, friend, to keep us busy till his son comes to get us. But it doesn't mean that we don't read, study, pray, seek, ask, and all of those things. But it does mean that with patience we wait for God to give us revelation in areas in our lives. They say patience is a virtue, right? <laughs> it is. Uh, but impatience destroys. It does. The guy says, I, God, I'm praying for patience, and I'm praying for it now. That's what, we, that's what we want. We want everything instant. We don't live. Church is not a drive-thru. Our lives are not a drive-thru window. We need to wait for God to give us guidance about certain things. Uh, I remember uh, taking voice from Leroy Abernathy. Some of y'all know who. He was a guy, a guy from Canton and a strange character. But, he, uh, but I, I enjoyed my time with him. Uh, he wrote a lot of songs. In fact, a lot of some of the songs in the that Church of God read back hymnal book are his that, that he wrote. You'll see Leroy Abernathy uh, very talented. Sing as high as you've ever heard and as low as you've ever heard. Uh, he also wore a wig and makeup. But uh, <laughs> he did. He was a character. But he told me one time about a song. He said, I was standing on the corner and there was a cat. And he said, that cat was going to cross the road. And there was traffic, cars coming back and forth, back and forth. And he said, I was watching that cat for some reason. He said, all of a sudden, that cat darted out in the road. And, well, let's just say he didn't make it. Somebody said, oh. And Leroy said, that thought hit me. If that cat had just waited, had a little more patience, he would have lived. And he wrote the song, Take a Moment and Live. It's in that red back church hymnal book. Take a moment and live. That's what we need to do sometimes. Don't get in a hurry. Wait for God. Wait on the Lord. We spent, for this church building, many hours in prayer about this building. When and where. I remember those meetings, Bill, and some of you other guys, David, Greg, and others, and Bill in the back, uh, meeting because we had been offered a good bit of money for this property. We hadn't broke ground yet. I remember one time Bill Hood said, I just believe this is where God has put us. This is where we're supposed to be. Every one of us said the very same thing, and that's why we're here today. Patience, patience, waiting on God to reveal to us in his time, not our time, what he wants in our lives. Can somebody say amen? amen. Don't be lured away 
from God with a desire for what he's not revealed. The last thing that we'll look at this morning is that Satan tempts us to desire what God has not yet intended. What God has not intended. How many of you believe that God knows, let's say, everything? Everything. There's not one thing God doesn't know. Listen, I was saved when I was 14 years old. But before I was ever born, God knew about that day coming. He'd already made plans to touch my little heart and draw me through his Holy Spirit to an altar in a little Baptist church in Marietta, Georgia and save my soul for eternity. God already knew that. He knew Jeremiah before he was ever born. He said, before, while you were yet in your mother's womb, I knew you. <laughs> that thrills me, by the way. I knew you. But God says to them, Ye shall be as little g gods. It was never intended for us, for man to be a god. Never. Not intended for man to be in charge of himself. You know why? Because God wanted to do that. God says, I know better than you about you. Won't you just step back and let me control your life? That's what God wants to do. So, Lord, help us. Why is it that we want to get in the way? I'm talking to myself this morning. We want to get in the way. You know, nowadays we hear it's my body. Leave me alone. Let me do with it as I please. We hear that, right? I'm going to tell you something. You're wrong. It's not your body. It's God's. It is God's. And I'm going to prove it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I think I had this put on the screen. Maybe if I didn't. Anyway, but from the Christian Standard Bible, it says this, verses 19 and 20. Don't you know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit? Who is it in you? We miss that a lot of times. But he lives where? In us. He's in you. He's in me if we've been born again. Who is in you? Whom? You have from God. You are not your own. That's what God says. Verse 20, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Now listen, I understand where people come from when they say that. It's my body. I should be able to do whatever I want to do with it. I understand that. You know why they say that? Because they've never read, read this. And they don't know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Because it's plain and simple right here. We don't belong to ourselves. And you say, well, why is it then that God has the right to say that to us? Because of that verse 20. He bought us. He paid for us. Listen, my guitar that usually is up here, that's mine. It belongs to me, right? So you don't have the right to come up here and turn the tuners on it, do you? 
Thou shalt not touch the Rickenbacker bass. <laughs> Wouldn't we be better off in our lives if we looked at our relationship with God that way? I'm not going to go out in the parking lot in a few minutes and try to get in your car because it doesn't belong to me. Now, I might, but it, it'd be a, <laughs> just because of the medicine that's going on up here. I can't remember whether I'm washing or hanging out, tell you the truth. We need to get our lives more in line with what God wants in our lives. I just believe that is pleasing to him. Don't you? Now, you know what is sad? There's churches going on, services going on in many, multiple places right now. Pastors, preachers have preached the word of God and they're about to give an invitation. And the Holy Spirit is there. And he's convicting. He's drawing people. He's causing them to realize some things, not just in their mind, but in their heart, that they need to make a move toward him. But guess who else is there? Satan. Enticing them to wait for a better moment. Oh, it's okay. You need to think about this just a little bit more. You know what will happen? The service will end. You'll go out those doors still lost while the devil laughs. I believe he does. I believe he laughs when he gains a victory in our life. Listen. Listen. I don't want him to have a victory in my life. He's had a lot of them through the years. But I like to say I've matured a little bit as a Christian. Maybe not much, but a little. But I know this, with God's help, the days will be brighter the closer I get to him. Listen, we're going to have we're going to have issues. We're going to have problems. You don't, you don't live together married for 42 years without, without having some issues. Yeah. Greg said, poor Cheryl. That's what keeps her close to God. She's married to me. I don't want God to walk through my garden calling my name and me hiding myself from him as he did Adam and Eve. And Adam said, Lord, I heard you. <laughs> I heard you. I did. But I hid myself because I was naked. God said, who told you that? sin listen let me tell you you, you you say well man I just that's just the way it is no listen I can't remember the exact verse it's Romans 6 I think something that sin shall not have dominion over you that's what God said so if Sin is ruling our lives. It's not God's fault. It's ours. But I want to tell you, folks, God stands here today saying, come home. I got what you need. Or maybe it's been a while since you felt in your heart what you used to feel. And God said, Come on, we can fix it today. Right? We can. Maybe you say, well, 
yeah, I'm thinking about it. I don't remember a time when I really said from my heart yes to Jesus Christ and invited him in as my Savior. Not from up here because everybody else went to the altar, but from here because God was drawing me, speaking to me. The morning that I got saved, I went to church that morning with one purpose in mind, get saved. Because Friday night before that Sunday, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. If you've been here and heard me preach before, you've heard that. I love, I'm like Paul, I love telling. I don't live as good as Paul did, but I love telling about it. God reached out and gripped the heart of a young teenage boy. I want to tell you, he'll do it today. If you'll listen to him, if you'll listen to him and do what he says, he can heal, he can heal marriages, he can fix whatever's wrong in your life. And if you need a savior, you better, you better get it now. You see what's happening in the world? Listen, things are coming together. They're coming together. It ought not be much of a surprise or a shock to us. What's happening? And I believe that soon and very soon, God's going to turn his head to the right and say, Son, it's time. Go get my children. Bring them home. Bring them home. Get them out of that mess. Don't you be left wondering what if. You need to settle it today. Father, I thank you for the time to preach your word this morning. And I thank you for the guidance, direction that the Holy Spirit gives. Lord, right now in this hour, in this moment, I pray for every heart, every person that's sitting on a seat in this place. I pray as the Holy Spirit moves up and down these aisles right now that if he's stopping in certain places that we'll listen and we'll say, yes, I need a change in my life. I need to fix whatever it is in my life. And I pray that you'll encourage people to do that today, today, right now in this moment. While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and no one's looking, no one's leaving, we'll be finished here in just a moment. But it's a very sensitive time right now as the Holy Spirit is speaking to people. I wonder if there's one here or more that would say, Rick, I need a close, closer walk with God in my life. I want that. I wonder if you just, I'm just going to pray for you. I'm, I'm, I don't come to you, but would you slip your hand up and, and just say, yeah, I, 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 need, I need some prayer in my life. How many? Right now, quickly. Yes, yes, I see that. I see that hand. I see those hands. Yes, yes. Thank you for being honest. This doesn't necessarily do anything. It certainly won't save you. If you're lost, but it's the first step toward God. And I thank you for your honesty. Now, I wonder if there's some this morning that would, that would say, Rick, I want you to pray for me because I don't think I've remembered ever at a time in my life when I felt that drawing to God and I said yes to Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I invited him into my heart. And I asked him to forgive my sins and save me from my heart. If you have done that, God bless you. But if you haven't, today's the day. Is there one or more that would lift your hand? I'm just going to pray for you. And say, Rick, that's, that's me. I'm not sure if I died today that heaven would be my home.
Jesus name for these hands that's been lifted I know there's I know there are hearts here this morning that hurt I know there's sickness I know there's folks that are grieving this morning I know it personally and I pray that you'll help them and encourage them but I also pray for anyone in this place that doesn't know you as their Savior, that they'll just come this morning, that they'll just come. It's so simple that if we just step out and come and let folks pray with us and encourage us and talk with us, we can settle those things today. And I pray that we'll see that happen in this next few moments in Jesus' name. I want us to stand. They're going to sing. I want you to be obedient now to the Lord. If you raised your hand this morning, listen, I want you to come. If you need to be saved, you come this morning right here. There's people, Greg, y'all come out. Uh, Alan, come and stand up here. We'll help you. They'll help you. They'll encourage you. If you have questions, they can answer those questions, and we'll pray about this thing. Right now. Come on, right now. Don't wait. Come on. for you today. First up for the men's fly fishing and stakeout that's coming up in a couple of Saturdays. If you are signed up to, to be a part of that event in LJ, if you will come and see Greg. He just needs to get some, some verifications and confirmations from a few of you. Students, 6th through 12th grade, tonight we have Pillars and Forge. So we look forward to seeing y'all tonight. Uh, a lot of exciting things when I believe Mr. Burton I think he is, he's actually going to be teaching the guys some financial planning tonight as part of their, um, their life skills tonight. So, uh, yeah, so everybody needs to learn a little bit of that. So, 
Uh, and then also, Vacation Bible School, we are officially open for registration. So if you have not gotten online and registered your children, your grandkids, your neighbors, please encourage everyone to do so. And uh, Those spots are filling up very fast, and we do have a limited number of spots. So please, please, please be sure to get online and do that. If you are interested in volunteering for VBS, we still need some assistance. You can actually go out to the welcome desk and give them your name and your email and someone, someone will contact you. And then finally, we just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. Guests that are with us, if this is your first time or maybe uh, you've been kind of trying us out for a few weeks, there is a card in front of you and it says next steps. We would love for you to fill out that card. You can turn it into the welcome desk. They have a gift for you. You can also go to the back wall and scan any of those QR codes to find out information. Um, we have a next steps class coming up. Our next one is going to be April the 21st. So I believe that's next Sunday. Yes, next Sunday. Next Sunday we've got a lot of things happening. Glory Bound's going to be leading us in worship. And then we also have our next step luncheon. So if you've been coming and you really just... Maybe you're interested in making Rising Hills your church home. Maybe you'd like more information about Rising Hills. We believe that there are two ways um, to get involved or to, maybe I should say this, say this. You'll hear a lot of people say, I keep coming up back because it feels like home. And there are two ways we believe that Rising Hills becomes home. And that is through your connection, which is your D teams, getting involved in a small group, as well as your contribution. And I don't mean money, I mean your, your time, your service. Where are you plugging in to serve? And so you'll hear a lot about how to get connected and how to contribute uh, in a part of our home teams is what we call them in our service teams. So you can, again, scan that QR code or you can come and have lunch with us next week and we'll go into more detail about that. But be sure to fill out that card and give it to the ladies at the desk because, again, we have a gift for you. And we just thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, if you'll stand, one thing that my preaching does makes you appreciate your pastor. So God bless you. Have a safe week, a healthy week, and see you back next Sunday.